the things that happens when you build out one of these big satellite constellations. Even though you may underwrite it based on demand in Europe or based on demand in North America, you're actually buying capacity the whole world round. And one of the big opportunities that comes from that is underserved, underdeveloped countries that do not have reliable access to the internet, you buy that for free with this constellation. So there's a big opportunity there, I think. And there's a couple of ways to think about what are the barriers for these markets. Is it, uh, if we're thinking about rural India or southern Africa, is it a function of the internet is not available? Is it a function of the internet is not affordable? Is it a function of the internet is not uh, meaningful in terms of services offered? Um, we've been really interested in this question of sort of how would we think about connecting the four billion people today that don't have reliable access to internet? And my group's done some work in this area. We, uh, among other things, ran some trades on would you, if you were to do this, would you do it with laying copper the old-fashioned way, the rest of the North America and Europe sort of path? Would you do it with cell phone towers built out? Is there a possibility to do it from space? Would that be a reasonable way to do it? Turns out the answer to this is primarily economic in nature as opposed to um, technology or infrastructure. Uh, you would need to drop the price of internet offered by um, roughly a factor of 100 so 1% of the price that you would charge today in order to allow people in underserved markets today to, to purchase it, to, you know, to, have the, to have the means to do so. Um, so I think that's why it's an interesting policy question in a sense. Um, and we've already seen that play out a little bit in Ukraine with um, State Department and Starlink sort of going back and forth as to how to deploy internet in the Ukraine, given that infrastructure lines have been severed in that conflict. Um, th there's a fascinating discussion of sort of, was it SpaceX's initiative or was it the US government's initiative, et cetera. But from a policy perspective, I think that that might set some precedent about opportunities that we could use the internet from space in underdeveloped markets in the future. So one of the fascinating dynamics in the satellite market today is we have a whole bunch of new entrants. We're gonna flood the market with supply primarily operating at a low Earth orbit, and then you have a set of incumbents in the market, SES, Intelsat, etc., who have been in this market for years. Um, they supply the internet from space for um, aircraft, as we've all become used to, doing our email on the plane, cruise ships, maritime traffic, governments and military, etc. Um, how do you compete if your market is getting flooded with supply? How do you compete if uh, you know, billionaires treat it like a toy uh, and don't necessarily need the same kind of return on investment that a, uh, that a typical corporation would require. So there's a couple of ways to think about this. One is you retreat into your niche. Um, you find protected niches like government services or like um, internet on cruise ships and um, you develop that market. You, you lead in that market and you try to erect barriers to entry in that market. Um, Another way in which you can think about competing is just waiting the game out. Uh, there's a history of bankruptcy in this market. Um, 20 years ago we saw a big bubble burst. There are some people who believe there's a whole bubble today that the supply is not underwritten by demand. Uh, and uh, one strategy is to, to be prudent and bide your time while the other players um, go chase this technology. Some people believe the same thing is happening in autonomous vehicles today. There's, I, I saw hundred billion dollars has been spent in autonomous vehicles. There's some players who are just waiting it out to see what the, what the winning technology is going to be and essentially employ a fast follower strategy. Um, as you think about competing in this market though, another way to think about it is to be more dynamic, to offer higher levels of services and compete essentially on, on quality of your offering uh, rather than compete on a sort of mass market channel. And there's lots of technology in the satellite market, including phased arrays, the ability to essentially electronically steer beams rather than having like a mechanically steered beam that may enable uh, some of those incumbents to compete more effectively, to offer frankly better services uh, than what's being proposed by some of these new entrants. So it's a fascinating market. I don't, I don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be, uh, but we're really, we're really intrigued to study it along the way.